creating great motion graphics in DaVinci Resolve that look epic, tells a story, and something you're proud of does not have to be complicated. So here's a few tricks and wizardry to making cinematic motion graphics in Resolve. <laughs> Let's get started. All right, the first step when creating motion graphic scenes is to easily lay out your objects. So <laughs> in Fusion, I like to start with a background node and a merge. From here, we can go to the shapes and we can use a number of shape nodes, say like the S ellipse for a circle. I'll set the width and height to exactly one and then we can move this down like so. Now to connect this to our media out, we can throw in the S render and connect it up. The S stands for shape. Then let's copy and paste these nodes and create another circle that will be positioned to the top of our comp. We can also connect these two node trees together with a single merge node. Then we can connect that new merge to the previous one. You can also scale up objects inside of your merge and for your background node, we'll set this to a slightly dark gray color. Now, this is a very simple layout and we will build the scene to look like this. But if you have a vision with some punch, let's also build out this scene as it will demonstrate there's no boundaries to your creative vision. All right, that was, you know, a bit corny, but let's start with the S rectangle node and a S render node all connected to media out. With this node, we can increase the corner radius to round all this out and then we can decrease the width to make this very skinny and then increase the height to be really long and then lower the Y offset. Just choose the right shape node for your project, but under style, you can also change the color. But overall, this doorway will be our source of light for the scenes. So always think about where your light is coming from ahead of time when you're starting to build out your project. But to stay on track, we can copy and paste this rectangle and uncheck solid. This gives us a chance to have a very teeny tiny border width. Now we can go ahead and add a S duplicate and then increase the number of copies. And then we can also tie the Y size to the X size via expression like so. Then we can increase the size by a little bit to spread this across the scene. We can also connect both rectangle nodes together with a S merge and then connect that S merge to the render. Great. Now to animate this tunnel, we can add a S transform node to the rectangle. And again, we'll tie both of the size properties together and then just keyframe the X size to have our tunnel animate. Normally I would say beautiful, but we are just missing our floor. So to have the ultimate control, let's add a S polygon node and connect it to the merge. Now by holding shift on our keyboard, we can create a custom shape with some straight lines and then expand the design closer to the edge of the project like so, and then set the color to black. But all right, we got the basic skeleton of two projects out of the way. And next we'll throw in some buffoonery to make this cinematic. And if you want to support my channel, I can help you produce cinematic projects of over 400 templates and seamless transitions right here in DaVinci Resolve with my editor's motion pack. You can instantly preview and drop beautiful transitions right on top of your footage and use cinematic templates that you can easily update. You can check out the entire pack in the description below. If you do pick it up, you will be supporting my channel and making this content possible. So thank you very much. All right, to make things cinematic, the next step after layout is shading, which is really easy to do because all you need to do is throw in a background node and place this right after the S render and connect it back to merge. From here, you can set the background node to a gradient and then adjust that gradient layout to create a highly contrasted look. We can also apply this background node to our other circle and you know, that's basically shading in a nutshell. But to do this for our other composition, add the background node again under the S render and this time we'll do a radial gradient to darken the edges as our light is coming from the center of our scene right here. Now, I don't want our floor being affected by this. So let's add a merge under the background and then we can add another S merge and reconnect it to the floor and everything back together like so. Sometimes we have to reconfigure our tree and sometimes our lives as well. If you want to place graphics into your scene, feel free to merge that right into your tree and then use a transform node to resize and position it as needed. You can also just use a regular transform node to keyframe animate the size to so zoom into your project or keyframe any master property to animate your project. But okay, we've done all this work and you know, it just doesn't look great yet. No worries. These final effects are what will make everything cinematic and will turn you into a rock star. To get started, use the glow effect like so and I would mess with the spread and gain and finally the shine threshold. To animate this glow effect, let's right click the shine threshold and add a perturb. 
Then when you go to modify, you can adjust these settings to create a flickering animation, which is better than just using keyframes. And for some extra punch, you can duplicate the glow effect and try lowering the gain until your hunger for glow effects is satisfied. You know, I'm always hungry for glow. <laughs> Anyways, let's use the film grain effect. And I like starting with the 35 millimeter preset, and then we can just increase the grain strength. The next effect in the stack is brightness and contrast. We can slightly increase the gain and then add the perturb modifier once more. We can adjust the settings to create the flicker of your preference. And for some crazy effects, I like the JPEG damage effect, but also texture pop might work great too. However, adjust the settings here until you get these notable bands that look similar to the posterize effect from Adobe. Lastly, let's use the stop motion effect and set this to two, which tells Fusion to skip every frame and absolutely beautiful. And what's great is that these same effects can be applied to your other compositions, so perfect. Let me know if you want more Resolve tutorials and always be creative.